and welcome to the earnings conference call of ICICI Securities Limited for the quarter and year ended March 31st, 2022. We have with us on the call Mr. Vijay Chando, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Ajay Saraf, Executive Director, Mr. Harvinder Jispal, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Vishal Gulecha, Head Retail Equities, Mr. Kedar Deshpande, Head Retail Distribution Product and Services Group, Mr. Anubam Guha, Head Private Wealth Management, Mr. Subhash Kelkar, Chief Technology and Digital Officer, Mr. Ketan Karkhanis, Head Digital Client Acquisition and Co-Head New Solutions Group, Mr. Prasannan Keshavan, Head Operations, and Mr. Nilotpal Gupta, Head Data Science Unit. For the duration of this presentation, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. I will be standing by for the Q&A session. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. The business presentation can be found on the company's corporate website, ICICISecurities.com, under Investor Relations. I would now like to call Mr. Chanduk to take over the proceedings. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, very good evening to all of you, and welcome to the ICC Securities Quarter 4 call, as well as where we are taking the full year earnings call for fiscal 2022. So I'm sure that by now you would have already produced through our financial year numbers uh, and also the quarter 4 results, and also, of course, our presentation, which has been uploaded. I will start with highlighting a few points. First, on the financial side, three things I would like to highlight. If you look at the FY22 revenue, this stood at 3,438 crore, registering a 33% growth over the last fiscal year. This has been uh, led by a strong performance across all businesses that uh, we are in. Uh, our profit after tax for FY22 grew by about 29%. Uh, and it came in at about 1,382.6 crores. The board of directors approved a final dividend of rupees 12.75 per share, taking the full year dividend to rupees 24 per share for fiscal F 2022. As we look at the operating side this year, what we find is diversification as a theme uh, has really stood out and it has stood out for us in the areas of revenue mix and also in terms of the client segmentation. When I talk about revenue mix, what here we see is that the broking as a contribution and to total revenue has now come down to about 45% in fiscal 22, which used to be 58% in fiscal 2021. In fact, when you look at quarter four, it has come down further from 45% to 42%. The retail allied equity income uh, contribution to the total equity has actually increased now to 32% in the full fiscal, uh, which was 16% last fiscal. And if you look at quarter four, it has actually further increased to 38% uh, of the total retail equity. This is on the back of traction from Prime and MTF, which has gained uh, by uh, quite a margin. We also see diversification with respect to age group and revenue mix. Of, of our total equity retail revenue, what we find is that 40% of revenue is coming now from millennials and Gen Z. 30% is coming from 40 to 50 year old and uh, another 30% coming from above 50. 60% of revenue in each of the fiscal 14 to 22 uh, is contributed by greater than five-year vintage customers, uh, referring to, relating to our ability to retain, uh, you know, vintage customers as we move along. With respect to client sourcing and uh, the client makes, we see that there has been a strong momentum and client addition. We added close to 22.7 lakh customers in fiscal 2022, which is the highest that we've ever done uh, in any year. Today, our customer base is now expanded to about 75.6 lakh uh, customers. 
Uh, in the last three years, the millennial and Gen Z has now uh, constituting more than 80% of our active customers and 65% of our customers acquired in FY22 are actually less than 30 years of age. 84% of these customers are from tier 2 and tier 3 cities. Uh, pursuing with this theme of diversification, the open architecture strategy has actually helped us reduce our dependence on ICC Bank for new customer acquisition. Because today we find that 79% actually of customers are sourced from channels other than ICC Bank. The other point we want to highlight with respect to this year is that there is clear traction in product propositions and our digital properties which we've been launching in the past few quarters. So to name a few, our PMS book has now crossed 700 crores. The prime proposition uh, to our customers has now crossed 1 million customers. So we, we have more than 1 million prime customers on our platform. The markets and money app that we have launched have crossed a combined download of about 1 million and uh, the markets app uh, is rated 4 plus on the Play Store. There is clearly a gaining traction that we see on some of our properties like one click baskets, which is both for equities and mutual fund, premium portfolios, masters of the street. These are very interesting products that we've launched to gain a share of business in the equities business, the equity side of uh, our uh, market opportunity. Uh, the MTF book on an average for this fiscal actually 0.6 times uh, from what it was last year. And we're clearly a market leader with a 22% market share uh, in the MTF side of the business. Also, finally, when we looked at the, the year, our efforts were actually recognized by various awards that we won. I don't want to talk about them. I'll just highlight two of them, actually. One of them is where we were ranked as India's best securities house by Asia Money 2021. And the second one I'll highlight is the Digital Wealth Manager of the Year uh, Award by AAA, uh, which is a digital award for 2022. I'll now turn our attention and talk about quarter four performance. So while we look at the entire fiscal as a, you know, and, con and look at it as a strong uh, year on a whole, the quarter gone by was a mis mixed bag as far as the industry was concerned. We, we witnessed in the industry a reduction in cash equity volumes and also postponement of various primary market issuances owing to uncertainty in the market led by the geopolitical tensions arising out of the Russia-Ukraine war. The retail client additions to this industry, whether in terms of NSE active or also in terms of total number of DMAT accounts, also lost momentum in this quarter compared to the sequential previous quarter. While uh, the cash volumes reduced in the quarter, deriv derivative trading volumes continued to show growth, but clearly there was some moderation in the growth rate relative to the previous quarter. So on quarter four, our revenue grew by 21% on a YOY basis to uh, 892.3 crores. And again, this is uh, on the back of growth in all our business segments on a yearly basis. However, when you look at it on a sequential quarter basis, revenue declined 5%. Uh, this decline is primarily attributed to our uh, issuer and advisory business, which was impacted, as I mentioned, due to postponement of various public issuances due to the geopolitical uh, uncertainties going on. Uh, when you look at our distribution business, it actually showed an improvement. Equities business uh, overall remained flat on a sequential basis. Uh, even when you look at our cost structure, it remained flat. As a result, profit after tax for the full year increased 5% and uh, declined on a quarterly basis, increased by 5%, but declined by 9% on a sequential basis. This came in at about 340.3 crores. This sequential decline in profit can be attributed to lower revenue in the issuer and advisory business. Let me now just take you through some of the key highlights of our performance for the period. In the past, uh, you know, all the feedback that you've been giving us uh, uh, to increase our dis disclosures. Uh, this time around, we have uh, gone ahead and added uh, additional disclosures. This is uh, for the first time we are giving you a disclosure on our retail market share in equities and derivatives side. On the retail equity market share, 
we are happy to report that our market share improved by about 30 basis points uh, in quarter four on a sequential basis as compared to quarter three. So market share now has crossed 10% and is at 10.1%, which was at 9.8% in quarter three. This is clearly as a result of the traction uh, that is coming on various products that I just spoke about uh, uh, earlier uh, in, in my commentary. On the derivative side, however, our efforts to regain market share continue and it remains a focus area as our market share in derivatives actually declined in quarter four to 3.3 percent. You know, to recoup this market share, we have identified four key investment levers, namely pricing, experience, various tools to facilitate derivatives, and finally, the algos and the open uh, architecture platform. To update you on the pricing front, we have already launched NEO, which is gaining traction. On the experience and analytical tools side, we have launched our new market app one click derivative uh, platform, new trading view uh, on charts, uh, Option Express, we invested in improving UI UX among some of the other initiatives. As far as the open API architecture is concerned, we have very recently launched the same called Breeze API. Uh, and it is currently in the adoption phase. It has several industry first features. We've in a short period of its launch, uh, signed up with more than about 1,000 uh, you know, traders. A lot of that has to actually play out uh, in, in the times forward. On the back of these measures, what have we seen? We have seen an improvement in some of the input parameters, like number of customers, like orders, like lots, and there are many more initiatives in the pipeline which are in the domain of algo trading uh, platform. Uh, we are uh, coming out very shortly with a, um, you know, with a platform which we are branded as Meta Cockpit, which is uh, directed towards volume, high volume traders. Uh, we have also coming out with one touch simplified options trading product, which we branded it as Flash Trade. All these initiatives. Uh, we, you know, with being launched, we remain totally committed to start showing you a gain in market share as we move forward. On distribution business, uh, this witnessed a growth in revenue driven by insurance and other distribution products. Our loan base broadened with uh, distribution of home loans uh, and also some of the other loans that we distribute picking up momentum. Uh, we registered market share gains both on a sequential as well as YOY basis for flows into debt and equity mutual funds. We, we feel satisfied uh, when we look at the strong gain, gains that we have made at a granular level on the SIP count as far as mutual funds are concerned. Uh, this is on the back of the launch of our money app, which has seen good adoption from customers. So when you look at the mutual fund data, the noteworthy points are as follows. The mutual fund average AUM is up by 22%, which is an all-time high for us. The AUM market share uh, increased from 1.6% to 1.7%. Market share in SIP uh, improved and it came in at about 3.7%. SIP count for Q4 uh, touched 1 million per month. This used to be 700,000 uh, a year ago. And uh, the SIP flows increased by 31% YOY now. So in context of our insurance business, we are working on multiple prongs to harness the entire insurance opportunity. We are working on creating intuitive customer journey, which is highlighted by our partnership that we recently announced with CoverFox. Uh, in fact, the product with CoverFox has also been launched a few uh, days back. This is enhancing our product suite that is in helping us uh, integrate with insurance and it is helping us provide an analytical driven personalized experience for our customer uh, which is leveraging our money app. Loan distribution continues to scale up. Uh, this quarter we disbursed 660 crores uh, as against 530 crores that was done last year, same quarter. As far as the issuer and advisory business was concerned, it was impacted in this quarter uh, considering the environment not being very conducive for IPOs. Having said that, the franchise continues to uh, strengthen its leadership position and the pipeline is pretty strong. Uh, we also continue our efforts on growing recurring sides of the issue and advisory business like QIT blocks, 
and other advisory services. Having looked at Q4, I'll now uh, shift our attention and give a little bit perspective on the way forward. As we enter uh, FI23, uh, we are entering it on the back of a slowing market environment. However, we continue to believe quite strongly uh, on the medium term story for the industry. That story remains intact despite the short term headwinds. So FI23 will be a year of investment for us. We will be making strategic expenditure on investments on technology and marketing. This is in line with our endeavor to stay ahead of the curve. Investment in technology will be to magnify our digital capabilities, modernize our data center, and also help us transform our tech architecture to become cloud enabled. Key areas where we are spending on technology are cloud migration, launching new digital properties, addition of digital layers to existing ones to enhance customer experience, and finally building a reliable and a risk protected uh, data infrastructure. This year, our tech cost increased by 70% uh, as compared to the previous year. And in the year that is FI 2023, uh, we are budgeting a commitment of two, two and a half times what we spent in the year that just got concluded. Marketing spends is primarily proposed on brand building activities and increasing promotion and awareness on new properties, products, and features to increase uh, our presence. Today, if you look at the listed fintech space, uh, we would uh, rank as amongst the most diversified business models. And this diversified business model has a meaningful presence and market share in several business segments. And today, it would be fair to say that we have established ourselves as one of the leading fintech players in the country. We continue to press the pedal to strengthen our franchise and grain market share in the equity side of the business. and Continue as we do so to diversify into other revenue opportunities of insurance, loans, and other distribution products so that we can emerge as an open architecture, digital, neo financial services supermall. I'll end my commentary and throw it open for questions that you may have. Thank you very much for your patient here. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star, then one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star, then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The first question is from Kashyap Javeri from MK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for uh, a good set of numbers in challenging times. A uh, few questions from my side. First, uh, I just wanted a clarification. You mentioned about some budget being two and a half x versus last year. Was that marketing uh, and promotion budget? Is that what you mentioned? Uh, hi, uh, no, Kashyap, this is uh, technology spend. So okay. technology spends have been growing. So that was uh, higher by 70% this year. And on top of that, uh, we spoke about uh, a two and a half times uh, for the coming year approximately. And uh, what would be, uh, so would this be expensed in PNL or this would be like, uh, you know, a capitalization balance sheet? It will be a combination. So, uh, I mean, the overall outlay is uh, uh, both uh, CapEx as well as uh, uh, OpEx. Uh, bulk of it would be CapEx. And would you be able to quantify FI22 number? Uh, FI22 number would be, uh, in terms of CapEx, would be of the order of about uh, uh, 60 odd crores. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, thanks for that clarification. Couple of questions from my side. One, uh, you know, we have again sort of reclassified revenues uh, in our presentation, uh, both uh, in terms of let's say equity and the light as well as distribution. So if you could help us understand, you know, um, how do we compare even Q on Q? Uh, sorry, how do we compare that with the previous classification? Uh, what has changed? Uh, second question is in terms of client addition. Uh, while you know you mentioned that you know for the industry as a whole uh, you know the the the, the uh, addition has de declined uh, and which is pretty much visible in some of the large players also but 
uh, you know the the decline for us in terms of new client new active net client addition uh has been you know a uh, much sharper decline visible at the competitors uh, uh, in this quarter so what would explain that sharper fall uh third question is in terms of your interest expense by mtf and esop interest income has grown by about uh, you know 1.6x uh, versus last year uh, interest expenses have grown almost about 3x so what has driven that number and last question is in terms of employee cost uh was there any one off ride back or something in the same quarter last year where uh, the cost have you know sort of gone up from about 105 crores to 170 crores so these are the four questions which i have reclassification of revenues uh, slower than competition uh, you know client uh, addition uh, interest expenses and mpi cost yeah so uh, kashyap uh, let me uh, try to take it in the reverse order uh, the, those answers are fairly straightforward yes uh, last year uh, if you remember our commentary uh, we had a slightly upfronted variable cost for the first half as a result of this q4 uh, was uh, relatively lower than the run rate in fact our cost to income ratio for employee cost to income ratio was one of the lowest in q4 uh, which was 20% and we had given a guidance that a more normalized number is of the order of about 23 to 25% uh, so against uh, that normalized number the increase is primarily on account of growth in uh, the employee base and increment uh, so that is the answer to the fourth one now let me go to the third one where you are saying that the uh, interest income increase uh is on account of two parameters number one is as you have rightly said growth in mtf and uh, uh, loan uh, the entire loan book the second is also that we have interest income increase because of fds that we place uh, with exchanges and those fds uh, have to keep on increasing as the volumes keep on increasing so that is the interest income on account of fds uh, uh, both of them put together is sh showing that uh, growth uh, which is three times uh, your third question was Sorry, uh, when you say 3x when, uh, uh, my question was that 30 crore uh, you know um, the the uh, interest expense has gone up to about 90 crores uh so uh, i sort of i couldn't understand what you're trying to say in terms of fd so our uh fds with the exchanges that we put uh you know we would uh, is there any expense that you are uh, you know clubbing over here i i couldn't understand actually to be no honest. no so 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 let me tell you uh on the interest income right there are two line items one is interest income that we generate from mtf loan books basically okay that is one uh interest income the second interest income is from the fixed deposit that we place with exchanges okay these are two line items which impact the overall interest income right on the expense side the borrowing uh, which funds both these line item is basically commercial paper borrowing which is which comes under finance cost so okay. the finance cost increase is for both these line items okay that is what i'm trying to say okay okay so if i look at nii level yeah. uh what would be growth at nii number if i if you go to net of these expenses yeah so on a nii uh, basis the growth would be primarily the growth that you are seeing in the mtf uh, interest component okay uh, that would be the growth okay sure because fd and the commercial paper borrowing would be almost even steven so there is no negative carry or a positive carry okay okay sure sure now yeah. moving on to your third question which if i remember was uh, on account of slower growth uh, in nsc active if i remember that is what you asked these are we players as you rightly said one is a bit of a moderation that we have seen uh in q4 in the market and in most of the uh, players i mean you've seen uh, month on month uh, for jan feb etc the numbers have been softer uh that is one theme the second theme as we have been articulating is uh, that we are focusing on uh, improving the quality of the mix and consciously we are wanting to uh, have a scale uh which helps us to improve the mix of the sourcing 
after which we want to scale so that has been a conscious effort uh, because of which you are seeing a slightly more delta vis a vis some of the other players uh, would it be also because uh, if i look at attrition from the client addition uh, you know this quarter is slightly higher for us uh, the drop drop out of the clients uh, at the net level so i'm just trying to calculate open plus you know whatever you have added which is about 618000 and closing is about 3.03 uh, you know million so drop out would be roughly about 340000 which is uh, significantly higher than what we have seen in the past uh yeah so kashyap uh, in fact uh, uh, our uh, emphasis on quality is from uh, this particular aspect that you know once a client uh, does even a first transaction getting a second transaction is where you know this parameter of quality comes into it. Uh, and once now we have got an experience of let's say 12 months 13 months uh of the sourcing a uh, higher scale of sourcing we are trying to uh, gauge the channel which gives us more sustainable quality and that is the reason why yes you have seen a higher drop off and that is also leading to our conscious effort of improving the mix before scaling sure sure and lastly on the reclassification yeah so reclassification let me uh, uh, clarify once again uh, i think you are referring to the retail equity and allied which is uh, uh, one line item we have always been saying that retail equity and allied is our total income from equity businesses uh, we also upload apart from the presentation we upload a very detailed uh, uh, excel uh, spreadsheet which gives you all sub breakups but the point that we wanted to make was that the 521 crores that you are seeing for retail equity and allied that is the total income that we have been able to generate in our equities business and it includes the income that we earn from broking uh, the interest income the charges that we have and uh, it has to be seen together and that's why this is the way we look at it and uh, that's why what you'll see at an allied level is consistent it is 527 crores and 521 crores these are the two numbers the breakup between broking and uh, allied is also there uh, detailed as uh, a disclosure in nature so but i think there is uh, you know change in the institutional brokerage number also which this quarter you have reported at about 63 crores and uh, in this presentation the previous quarter number is about 69 crores but if i look at our you know q3 presentation that number uh, in that presentation was only about 44 crores so Uh, and similarly, if I look at even distribution on volume wise basis, there has been change. So, uh, has there been change across the uh, you know line items? So, uh, uh, here even in the institutional equity business, uh, what institutional equity business does is two types of uh, business. One is the flow business. The second is it is also helps in the corporate finance deals or investment banking deals. and there is a revenue sharing which is an industry practice that is what is uh, called the allied income which also the details are available in the disclosure so this is what we started from the last quarter with that explanation sure sure thank you so much uh, that is from my side sure thanks kishan thank you the next question is from prayesh jain from motilal oswal please go ahead yeah hi sir thank you so much for this opportunity uh firstly uh, on the uh, corporate finance side uh, you mentioned that the recurring segment is growing uh, could you give some color as to what is the share of that recurring segment right now and um, how, how do you see this business shaping up in uh, fy 23 uh, by you know you have a good pipeline of deals in store but looking at the market conditions Do you understand a sharp decline in the revenue from this segment? That was my first question. Secondly, on the NPF book, uh, with market volatility increasing, would you take a call to uh, pay, you know, to reduce the reduce the income or re- reduce the lending on this on on this side of the uh, of the book? Uh, and thirdly, on the distribution side. uh do you think that you know like uh, the growth moment that we seen uh, will continue next year as well 
sorry, Presh, uh, if I may just bother you to, uh, with the last question, if you can repeat, I missed that. I got Literally your I was asking, the last one. So distribution income, what is the kind of fraction you expect in the next year? Yeah, if I can answer your first question on the pocket finance side and bit of a predictability there, uh, you know, what we are doing also is, uh, you know, given our dominance in the equity capital market, we're a 70% market share last year, uh, what we are building, uh, you know, invested is building up on the advisory side, which is the private equity m &A, and we are seeing traction. So that kind of gives a bit more stability. Uh, on the on 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 the incomes, uh, while continuing our uh, you know dominance on the equity capital market side. Oh, Presh, uh, could I move Hello. to uh, the second question? Do you have any follow up? No, so basically, I wanted to understand as to you know, uh, so in FI twenty two. Uh, what would be the kind of revenue you would have from IO and uh, rest others if you can give that split up? So uh, overall revenue we have uh, disclosed, uh, uh, Presh, mm -hmm. which is uh, it was uh, 65 crores for the quarter uh, mm -hmm. as compared to 110 crores. Mm -hmm. uh, within that, predominantly it is uh, uh, capital market activities and that mm -hmm. uh, is definitely our uh, key strength. There we have a strong pipeline, about 870 billion is our pipeline. A uh, lot of deals with strong left lead mandates. Uh, but as uh, Ajay uh, commented, and it will depend on how uh, things evolve. Uh, but yeah, that is our strength and uh, market share over there is important, which is where we have worked towards and uh, tried to gain. Sure, so sure, thanks. Uh, Presh, if I were to move to your question on MTF. Now, uh, MTF uh, with a bit of an uncertain environment, our endeavor, uh, so MTF is a product strategically that uh, we have been focusing on. It has uh, given us dividends in terms of uh, revenue diversification. It also is a key source of attracting customers with uh, high uh, value uh, base. Uh, going forward, our endeavor would continue to be to focus on this product with uh, diversification as a theme and broad basing. So reduce concentration, broad base, have more number of customers, increase penetration. These are the themes, but per se, the product uh, is something that we are focusing on and we in, in fact intend to scale it up even further. Uh, okay, uh, just following up on that, uh, so there is also ease of funding impact that would be seen. So ease of funding is not some uh, ease of funding impact would be seen next year, right? What would be that quantum? So ease of funding right now is roughly about fourteen hundred crores out of the total seven thousand five hundred crores, uh, seven thousand cro uh, uh, five hundred crores that you see. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it is a bit of a rundown. So next year we should expect. Uh, it to have a uh, bit of a slow wind down uh, because of the regulatory changes that we discussed last time. Uh, mm -hmm. But right now it's holding, uh, it's at about 1400. So the next year it could be much lower than this, is it right way to think? 1400 mm -hmm. close to possibly half of that. That's that's reasonable to assume, Krish. Okay, now, got that. Uh, Vishal uh, wanted to add on the MTF point. Yeah, so I mean, as you said, that market volatility also has a role to play. So I just wanted to, you know, keep everyone informed that we work with a risk governance system and all the positions which are uh, open are governed by that. So if you go back March 2020, actually we brought down the book by almost, you know, 40 to 45 percent, keeping in mind the market conditions, etc. However, when we saw the opportunity to scale up, I mean, we immediately put all levers in place and uh, quarter on quarter, we added, you know, to the to the funding amount. So, uh, we'll have adequate margins and as uh, Harvinder said that uh, uh, the effort is, you know, how many more stocks we add so that uh, the risk is diversified among 
quality stocks and also how many more customers we have so there is no uh, concentration on a particular set of uh, customers uh, Presh, uh, also you had a question on distribution traction and what uh, we can expect in the coming year. So mm -hmm. our focus consistently over the last uh, many quarters has been to uh, diversify our revenue. Distribution has shown uh, good growth. We are seeing improving traction on many products, uh, mutual funds, insurance, loans, fixed income, etc. These are some of the products which did well. Our focus is to build up uh, this particular franchise. Uh, uh, the loan book, which is scaling up, insurance, where uh, there are partnerships that we are trying to do. We are uh, getting more partners, uh, 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 insurers, manufacturers on our platform, uh, and also digitizing journey. So these are some of the initiatives that we are taking. Our endeavor is to uh, improve and uh, build up traction in this across all products. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. The next question is from Aditya Jain from City Group. Please go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, um, so a, a few data keeping things. So uh, could you give us a breakup of the total 373 crores of uh, brokerage revenue into retail and institutional? Yeah. Uh, so if you look at uh, retail brokerage and uh, for, for the quarter, it's about uh, 325 crores for retail brokerage and institutional brokerage would be 48 crores. This is the brokerage income. But as I clarified earlier, retail total business uh, revenue, retail equity revenue is about 521 crores, including LI. And institutional, that the amount which is there, that is including IB revenue share. Yes, that's right. That's about 14.8 crores of allied plus uh, 48 of uh, broking, totaling up to 63 crores of uh, institutional equity business. Understood. Perfect. Um, and uh, could you tell us the number of NEO subscribers um, um, and, and operational accounts? I know that separately you haven't mentioned this number. Uh, for a couple of quarters, but uh, if it makes sense to share that number, the number of operational accounts and the new subscribers now. Yeah, so uh, one in terms of uh, uh, the data points, Aditya, uh, offline also I will uh, direct you to our uh, disclosures, which is a separate link that we have, where all these data, including historical data, is there. The new customer base is now 2.2 lakhs uh, right now as of quarter end. The total client base again is uh, disclosed over there as 7.6 million. Got it. Perfect. Sorry, I, I was uh, looking in the wrong portion of the website, I guess. Uh, and then two uh, qualitative things. Uh, um, so one, the API uh, business um, which you are building more. Um, so how uh, the monet how does monetization in that happen? So is is it like some sort of a bulk pricing? Is it volume related just uh, broadly to understand how that works um, and sort of in the in a similar way in the partnership with uh, with cover cover fox um, uh, how does uh, that work and uh, which part of revenue will it enhance yeah so uh, api monetization is again by way of you know the brokerage which customer generates and also the allied income so just two months old initiative and as uh, we just said that we have crossed 1000 customers when we look at the initial patterns we see that the number of orders have grown almost 2x in the same period right so it is uh, kind of you know nudging customers on various uh, uh, opportunities giving those opportunities to customers and customers are able to encash that so that is how we see you know the monetization happening uh, we are adding many features first of this kind of uh, I mean features in the industry like giving historical data uh, one minute candles etc which is not the extend uh, industry standard so far and we also want to bring you know the complete uh, back testing model also many strategies which customers can form using our platform so I'm sure that the volume and the brokerage plus a light income will justify and justify the monetization. 
uh, Aditya, just to kind of further uh, elaborate, uh, so we have uh, various plans. Uh, API would be a manner of transacting uh, from the customer to us, depending on whichever plan the customer has chosen. Uh, for example, if he's a new customer versus uh, uh, a prime customer or lifetime prepaid, depending on whatever plan he has chosen, the brokerage will be charged on that, uh, on overall volume that is done through API or directly. Either which way, we don't have as of now any plan which uh, is a bulk pricing, one payment, uh, unlimited volume plan. Got it. Very clear. Thank and you. On the insurance side, oh, sorry. Yeah. On uh, your second question was with respect to uh, Coverfox, and uh, so there the partnership with Coverfox uh, is uh, expected to help our insurance business. Uh, they are helping us build a technology uh, interface with a assisted uh, digital journey uh, for both uh, general insurance, uh, health insurance, uh, some of those products uh, which we are focusing on. And uh, our expectation is that that is where the traction should build. Uh, the partnership is uh, uh, Coverfox being a technology provider and us uh, doing the marketing. So that is the uh, partnership. So a customer of ISEC could buy insurance on the ISEC platform, and because Coverfox already has linkages with insurers, uh, you could uh, leverage on the back of those rails uh, to offer right. that uh, the insurance plans to customers. Is, is that the right and, understanding? Yeah, that's right. And the way we have worked out this partnership is that we have uh, kind of uh, agreed a uh, kind of a revenue share. Uh, with them so that jointly uh, both uh, uh, both the players uh, will work towards creating uh, or scaling up this business. That is the way we have uh, we have designed the commercials, but uh, what you're saying is right. The model is uh, tech partner, journey, and uh, us doing the... But it's our life. Yeah. 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 So uh, just to elaborate, conceptually what you have explained is correct, but for our partnership, Coverfox is giving us an, a, a specific um, UI UX customized for us, and the back end is tied up with our partners using our license. So he's just a software service provider. Hmm. Right? So, so that is the arrangement. So whoever are our uh, insurance distribution partners, the pipes are connected only with those uh, insurance partners. So in our case, it will be, uh, you know, the general insurer partners that we have, the health insurance partners that we have. And as in when we launch life, it will be the life insurance partners that we have. But it's ICIC securities partners that would be on the back end. Got it. So the, the, the broker of record will be ICIC securities on the insurance yes. policy and not cover Fox. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, just to clarify, technical term would be corporate agent. Uh, broker technically is a different term in insurance policies. Okay. So we are working under a corporate agent license and not a Correct. broker license. That's Correct. right. Correct. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Karthik Sani from Mirad Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, Thank you for this uh, chance. So I just want to ask uh, one question that would be around your uh, spend that you're aiming of uh, 2.5x uh, uh, compared to uh, FY22. Uh, and you said that uh, this will be a mix of both uh, CAPEX and OPEX. So I just want to understand what will be your uh, cost of income given it's 49% uh, uh, right now and your, ta and your, your target being around uh, uh, forty percent. If I'm uh, not uh, uh, wrong, could you just uh, give me some uh, uh, color on that, please? Yeah, sure. So, uh, this uh, spend will uh, enhance our cost to income ratio. Maybe uh, for the next year, we have been guiding on this uh, earlier as well. That a journey to forty percent or a much. Uh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, higher operating leverage compared to today might go through a slight increase before it starts coming down because we are investing uh, in a couple of areas in the coming year. Uh, we could see an expansion further up from the current 49% uh, in the coming year before it uh, starts trending down. 
all right uh, thank you thank you the next question is from ages lakhani from unify capital please go ahead uh, yeah thanks team uh, icci uh, congratulations on the result uh think two quick questions one is um yeah, i'd like to understand your thoughts on how uh, or why a trader will come and trade on the platform more what is the key driving metrics uh, so uh, if my if my understanding is correct you guys have the best trade on the mtf in the industry and that provides leverage uh, despite that you know we are not able to garner incremental derivative market share so can you just uh, expand a bit on that strategy because that is quite crucial for us the way i understand yeah see uh, every product on icici direct i mean we treat it as a as a separate customer segment right so beat cash beat mtf beat intraday uh, uh, equity trading or derivatives within derivatives again future there is a separate market for us and options is a completely different market now the effort is in each and every product how do we create that niche which customers you know which adds value to customer so we have looked at each and every product i mean as i said that all this five six products and try to add you know features tools uh, attractiveness in terms of rates also you know the other uh, important commercial parameters like uh, interest etc on derivatives number of initiatives we have uh, taken apart from the new uh, pricing in terms of tools in terms of apis even in the current quarter when we look at the initiative i think we have completely simplified the derivatives uh, journey on our website we have also simplified our journey on market app we have added number of tools and it is getting traction like one click derivatives which is a ready made strategy execution tool which otherwise user will find it very difficult you know to do in uh, segmented way uh, the execution of uh, that strategy that also is getting uh, traction like another an, uh, other initiatives like auction express apis where we are trying to give set of data and also connectivity which is not the market norm so far i mean it is completely at a different level and we'll keep adding value to that so that is on uh, derivatives uh, segment as far as cash is concerned i think the prime is the key proposition there we have added a new Uh, attractiveness by bringing uh, lifetime uh, prime plans now just two months and we have seen a very healthy adoption rate you know from the dormant customers from the new customers and also customers who want to explore our products more you know like mtf etc and needs that uh, 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 absolutely fine commercial uh, terms so that's what our endeavor is that each and every product should be looked at as a separate market separate customer segment and we should fine tune each and everything what matters to customer no that uh, thank thanks for that but uh, sir i on the derivative side i just want to understand since switching costs are low what is uh, what is it that you know that segment would require from us that we were lacking today which causes the shift right so is it is it is it platform is it uh, because he's already used to the trader is used to executing his trades on a different platform so is it is it price that is a determinant to for him to move or is it features or, or what exactly is that that will that you have that you didn't have earlier yeah so i'll i'll just uh, add to what vishal said what vishal was basically saying that every every sort of product that you are trying to uh, uh, offer to your customer you need to have a winning proposition around it right and you create an entire ecosystem supporting that product so that it gives uh, the customer a winning feeling and you a, a winning outcome so with respect to derivatives there are four items required to win in our assessment right a trader always looks for low cost it's a high volume low margin business therefore all types of costs that he incurred hidden non hidden direct not indirect has to be the lowest that attracts him. the second is it's a it's a fast game he wants a platform which is fast responsive salient giving him easy entry easy access and multiple platforms uh, to access uh, and the features that he expects on each platform has to be consistent right that's the second thing so i would summarize all this by calling it a great experience third he needs tools to win 
today uh, you know tech has given the ability to create a number of tools which translate its strategies into simple trades which he enters english and gets a you know outcome which can be sort of executed uh, to uh, at a very short notice uh, so i'll i'll call this as tools to win the fourth is apis and algos because then he creates his own front end and he uses that as an execution platform so these are the four sort of elements that are required uh, we have actually been investing in some of the other areas to modernize to upgrade to improve and you know you would have seen that on equity side we've been able to successfully do that and we are seeing gains in market share uh, it would be fair to say that you know we made a, a, a rather late start with respect to derivatives uh, and um, uh, you know we were uh, able to make that uh, market higher market share in the past because of the uh, le excess extra leverage that we were able to give given you know what was possible in the pre um, peak margin norm it is only after or around the peak margin norms that you know real proposition investment started beyond you know the leverage proposition uh, pricing that piece is done significantly done and getting absorbed in the market great experience is about 7 or 8 month old story uh, i mentioned that you know there are many more refinements doing you you will never make the taj mahal in the first go uh, but we have a good good app now good uh, ex acceptance uh, you know close to a million downloads on the markets app alone to get, together with our money app it's crossed more much more than a million uh, we are seeing a four star plus rating there um, tools uh, to win you know i elaborated there are several tools that have been added uh, and more tools are coming but these tools are all the you know i would say three months to four months old tool in in the platform so there is still familiarity which is going on so there is a lot more marketing and co communication efforts that we need to do and then finally apis and algos algos is yet to be launched it's going to be a q1 launch apis have been launched few days back maybe a couple of weeks back and we've got a thousand plus uh, traders sort of uh, taking that facility so if you really look we are a youngster in this field and, and I, it, it may sound a little strange to hear this from me but the fact is that in these areas we have our investments are few months old um, you know we remain you know we are going to invest on fundamentals we are going to invest on investment uh, input parameters and we are quite confident because we've been able to invest in input parameters and we got an output parameter on other sides this is one area where we are not got the output parameters i must say it is disappointing it's disappointing for all of us it pains us a lot and we remain totally totally committed on building these uh, capabilities into the company so that the trader feels that yes he's got a winning ecosystem here you know that's the eventual sort of a place are we seeing green shoots definitely we are seeing green shoots because we are seeing on a daily basis improving number of uh, trades improve increasing number of uh, uh, you know uh, orders and so on and so forth uh, yeah it's got to translate into gains at a faster clip than what we are seeing for sure there's no running away from that and that's what we are committed for and we hope that you know during the course of this uh, you know year we'll be able to really cross that uh, hurdle that thanks for this update that's very helpful and so just one question to you uh, that you know we've seen you know month on month additions in clients as high as 2 lakhs and then probably at the lower end because we are choosing the channel mix like you have rightly called out for quarters so uh, in terms of uh, the run rate of clients what is the number that we should sort of be thinking around is it is it more uh, more on the more recent clients is that how you are looking at client additions or is it that once this um, once you figure out all of this the acceleration will take place in the later half of the year yeah so uh, i think uh, there is no perfect answer for this so sure, uh, yeah so let let me tell you how i'm thinking about it how all of us are thinking about it um, the pullback in numbers it would be fair to say is a deliberate pullback and the right. reason why we pull back is because we said that you know okay we like i probably would have explained in some of the earlier calls that we've done uh digital acquisition is not an amorphous acquisition there are at least five or six sub channels of acquisition each sub channel has got its own cost and its own behavior characteristics and its own you know participation in the market obviously out of the five not all five are uh, uh, of the same quality and caliber some channels are really good some channels are really bad uh and as would as it would be natural uh, in you know anything which is uh, giving you not so good quality is probably the easiest for any you know team member to acquire 
uh, and uh, uh, in the in the initial stages of our growth we we got a mix which was not you know certainly not optimal we learned that you know the good channels now that we have about 5 6 7 quarters of uh, data with us and clearly there are you know what we call green channels orange channels and red channels red channels we are suppressed suppressing which means that you know some of the uh, uh, clients which were coming of not so good quality are just been sort of shut off uh, the orange and the green channels uh, are the channels that we are pushing the accelerator on these are tougher channels to acquire but we have to invest in this so we will continue to invest we are in the ballpark of around 200000 per month kind of a rate uh you know I, i i mean at this point in time we are broadly running with that kind of a run rate but it's a review on a fortnightly quart, basis this number uh, you know you know is something that we can ramp up and ramp down based on you know how the market is sort of giving us a, a a lead and how our own you know behavior is coming so so we are running right now as i told you at at a broadly 2 lakh per month kind of a run rate uh reviewed on a fortnightly basis we we obviously you know in the in the quest for quality we cannot be giving up uh, you know the uh, growth numbers also so we are conscious of this i am trying to just do a balancing act right now if we see market well. giving us more traction we will we will you know uh, 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 press the pedal uh, to get more got it sir. so we should think of uh, the 600000 a quarter as the as the benchmark uh, for at least some time till the acceleration journey starts got it thank thank you sir so i'm taking it 15 days at a time yeah yeah got it sir got it got it thank thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of arsh arizna from ifl ifl please go ahead yeah hi thanks for taking my question am i audible yes please Yeah, so I just had a couple of questions around overall revenue growth. Uh, so I think if I just look at the retail brokerage line, I think uh, you've grown two percent YOY in FY twenty uh, two. Now this is despite a ninety plus percent growth in NSE active clients. I understand the equity volumes have come down this year, but overall, what is the outlook on the broking revenue? And I'm just talking about broking, not broking and allied next year. and in conjunction for overall revenue growth if from what i gather from the call you intend to scale up on the interest income with the mpf book on the distribution side and on the issuer side you would probably see some sort of decline so along with the broking revenue what is the sort of overall revenue and broking revenue growth that you are seeing going forward yeah so let's let's take this broking revenue uh, when we started this journey of transformation we said that you know we want to move away from this product centric sort of focus uh, to a client centric focus um, what we find in the market is that the way in which customers are charged for performing an equity transaction is pay for the services that you avail right uh, so so while the act of the brokerage is low or zero uh, there are several other services that they perform like fund movement uh, fund transfers uh, uh, you know various other um, uh, things that a customer does in terms of taking a position cutting up uh, you know margin shares as margin each activity is charged separately this is what we call we we never used to charge our clients uh, like this in the past so we have moved to a consciously said we will move away from being fixated on broking as the sole way of collecting revenue from customers and make it broking and allied the way others are charging in the market and moving to an activity based style of pricing so we are a, in a in a way in the in the journey of moving from one style to another style so as we are moving into this kind of a format judging us on broking singularly would not make sense because we are deflating our broking revenue and we are increasing our uh, you know allied revenue uh, to make the business model more robust so you have to view us as the total equity because as we are deflating broking revenue please understand we are getting closer and closer to the best pricing in the market and we are still managing to hold our Uh, you know revenue growth in fact we have seen continuous growth in our uh, overall revenue right so please view us because we are seeing this as a combination and not as a uh, you know singular uh, you know uh, or two different blocks so that's one point with that background um, uh, you know we we 
we are focusing on input parameters we are focusing on increasing market share so what is going to happen uh, in this year i think you are wanting to know what's likely to be the outlook I, I mean i can tell you input parameters will get all its attention uh, if markets are going to be supportive you should get amplification if markets are not then you will obviously bear the consequence of what what would happen as far as uh, issuer business etc is concerned you have to see that you know issuer business is approximately uh, between 15% to 20% of our total revenue and profit pool right so its impact would be you know to that extent limited um, uh, uh, at least i would say about 20 to 25% of that is not necessarily linked with uh capital market activity because it's a flow business as as i said and somebody else had also asked our efforts have been to keep increasing that that share so that the predictability about the uh, issuer services uh, increases um, uh, improves uh, f further uh, on an overall basis obviously we are planning for growth in the context of tough market conditions uh, we hope that we will be able to deliver that uh, because you know we clearly see that right now headwinds are there in terms of what uh, you know the markets are offering in front of us uh, however we strongly believe focus on input parameters keep your operating leverages in place keep your expenses variableized and that's another thing that we are focusing so that you are able to ma uh, you know manage your uh, uh, performance based on market conditions and, and not really become a slave to a completely uh, high fixed cost uh, angle you would have noticed some of our fixed costs uh, has uh, as a percentage of total costs have actually continued to show a declining trend quarter on quarter including this quarter sure sure fair enough thanks sujay uh, point taken on the way to look at revenues i just basically combining all what you said i just want to see why <laughs> why growth you said in terms of revenue would that be a mid single digit a double digit any sort of indication on that side it will be difficult uh, in our kind of uh, sector to have any kind of a projection uh, but as vijay said i mean our focus areas would be this and uh, uh, i mean we have seen almost double digit and a very strong double digit growth over the last two years uh, i mean it completely uh, depends on a lot of factors uh, our hl so let let me let me give you some past data viewing our type of business and giving seeking a one year six month kind of a guidance is very difficult i can tell you what's happened over 10 years and you know taken in blocks of 3 years take 10 years and taken in blocks of 3 years you will always find that there has been a any year any part of the you know uh, contiguous blocks of 3 years you will find that the cagr of profits have been at least uh, 17 18% uh, during this decadal sort of a phase and uh, revenue growth have been in the ballpark of 30 to 40% in that kind of a uh, range and profits have been between 17 and 25% so that's the de decadal experience but seen over a block of 3 years 3 any 3 contiguous years so that's been the trend um, we do believe that you know that kind of a trend should be contained uh, should be sort of uh, 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 there in our business model uh, on top of that, we are trying to uh, reduce the cyclicality so that more predictability comes by adding, you know, non-equity revenue, uh, which is, uh, you know, again an area of focus. So, you know, taking a guidance from me from for the next six months, nine months, one year would be very tough. Input parameters, yes, will keep improving. Uh, would view this business in a in a block of a three year, any three contiguous three years, and you will get a growing secular growing trend. Sure, thanks. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Sahaj Mittal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, and congratulations on a great set. Uh, sir, so a uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, firstly, just wanted to get a sense on what are the number of orders executed on an average in a single day on, a, on your iDirect market app? Uh, if you could uh, give out that number and the second one was around uh, how are the new investors sharing in such volatile markets uh, with customers which I say say security has are these customers making profits in the SNO segment or I mean how is the trend looking like and the third one was around what were the marketing spends in 4Q and for the full year and what's your target for FI23. Yeah. Yeah. 
high sage have in the year. So uh, uh, on the first one sage, uh, as of now, we have not put out uh, uh, the number of orders uh, on this. As uh, we have said in the past also with in, uh, due course, I mean, we will keep on adding to the disclosures as we have done in this quarter as well. Uh, but as of now, we have not put out that number. Uh, second, uh, your uh, question was that how are the new and the younger guys faring in terms of whether they are making uh, uh, profit or not? I will just request uh, Vishal to come in. Yeah, see, uh, our efforts is, you know, to take customers through a very, very disciplined approach, uh, be it any product. So in cash, like we encourage customer to go by our research recommendations. So we have given about 125 recommendations in uh, the Q4 with a success rate of about 75%. In derivatives also a product like uh, one click derivatives, you know, where uh, strict stop losses are followed, uh, uh, hedge positions are created. However, I mean, the market is, uh, uh, very very uh, spread out so customers do take their own decisions at times simon mean, decisions go right at times decisions go wrong but as long as they follow a very very disciplined approach and uh, guided by research i think we have seen gains in uh, customer portfolio be it mature or be it the younger ones who are coming to the market now so as i said in my earlier uh, discussion that you know, we try to come out with such research recommendations in every product. So be it, uh, you know, directional calls in uh, or directional positions in cash or derivatives and as well as, you know, MTF kind of a product where the portfolio is suggested, you know, for the uh, positions. Uh, the effort is to keep customers in a very, very strict discipline environment. So the anecdotal experience is that the customers make our uh, on an average, are not losing money uh, on the SNO side. Uh, not on the cash side, but my my concern is on the SNO side particularly. Yeah. So I mean, it it uh, the market also has to be supportive. In derivatives market, we see that maximum customers are on the buying side option, so they anyway limit their the losses. So when they gain, of course, options is a great uh, tool to deliver returns. And when they lose and being a buyer of options, I mean, we don't see much downside for the, those customers because of the inherent nature uh, of the product. But we uh, do see the trend that most of the customers are taking a long position. Uh, is that right? Yeah. So. So let me let me just give you two data points here. You have two types of customers: customers who follow, you know, tools or recommendations given by us. B customers who do not follow rules and regulations but do their own thing, and C who do a bunch of, you know, combination of both. Where what data is suggesting is that if you belong to the first basket where you you know strong you almost always follow the recommendations or tools given by us on icc direct we have a success strike rate of about 70 to 75 percent right uh, and therefore if you are following 100 percent of all of this there there is you will invariably land up in the positive side making money that's data point number one if you're doing this you know completely on your own then you know it would be whatever you know your skill and trade has resulted in uh, uh, positive or negative outcome and what is really happening i'll tell you with another data point and number three if you're a mix again it would be very similar to the second one invariably when people lose money they lose interest in the markets and they drop out so one way to look at it is that are you seeing a, a kind of a fluctuating or a declining trend of traders on your platform that is in a way an indicator uh, in an indirect way of people um, you know whether they are making money or no we've been seeing continuously uh, month on month an increasing trend of traders on our platform uh, you know so if you have too many people making too many losses you will definitely see a decline in that number uh, at least so far we have not seen and as vishal said the nudges are uh, or we call it through our tools like i alerts where we even alert customers from uh, risky trades <coughs> um, uh, happening. Um, move, I I would suspect people if you are following uh, you know that trade they should be by and large making money and feeling uh, happy. Oh, 
got it and on the marketing spend yeah so uh, just marketing spend for the quarter where of the order of about 30 crores uh, we are uh, we are kind of uh, spending on above the line uh, marketing as well as digital marketing uh, etc so all put together it was about 30 crores uh, this expense as we have called out uh, along with technology expense are two things where we do expect uh, growth uh, next year as well this 30 crore number for the four year would be uh, yeah about uh, 100 crores ballpark and where do we see this number trending for the next uh, say fi23 and fi24 maybe fi23 so difficult to kind of give exact number but as i said that uh, in terms Direct of knowledge. yeah it will be uh, on a i mean there will be growth in this ahead of expenses uh, overall expense growth so we are looking to invest in brand building uh, both below and above the line uh, in various properties not necessarily television and you know press etc uh, we are also quite heavily investing in uh, uh, you know, below the line digital investments digital properties digital uh, sort of uh, marketing spends um, that is uh, uh, therefore an area of investment that we are taking a call to uh, go ahead and make. Got it. And uh, lastly, on the tech spends, so what would be the hit on the PNL of the tech spends in 4Q and FI22? Uh, so Harvinder just called out that there was some six and six. Uh, 600 crores of uh, capex, 60 crores of capex in FI22. So, what would be the hit on the PNL and FOQ and FI22 if you could give out that number? Uh, yeah. So, uh, for uh, PNL, which is the operating expense, uh, it would be of the order of about uh, uh, 20 to 25 crores. This would be uh, for the full year. No, no, for, for the quarter you asked, right? Okay, and, and for the full year uh, in the range of 100 crores? Uh, about 80. Got it, got it. And uh, uh, so where would you, you know, so this 30 crores of marketing expenses, do you consider this expense as a variable ex uh, expense uh, line item in your, when you are classifying your fixed versus a variable expense uh, and you uh, disclose that in your investor presentation? So where do you take this expense line item? Yeah, a part of it, yes, because a part of it is also uh, on acquisition, the digital client acquisition, the marketing that we do uh, on various uh, properties. So that part uh, does get classified as variable, but a part of that is fixed, uh, which is to do with, uh, you know, above the line or any marketing or brand building spent. So the classification is anything which is for sales uh, is variable for acquisition and anything which is for uh, brand building, that's fixed broadly uh got it and uh, on the recurring expenses in the investment uh, banking side so 70 percent is uh close to about 70 percent is the is recurring in nature was that number right 70 75 percent so 70 percent is the market share uh says market share in the uh ecm uh for our investment banking business Hello. Excuse me, this is the operator. Uh, we've lost the line for the current participant. Okay. Participants would like to ask questions. Please press star, then one. The next question is from Himanshu Taluja from Infina Finance. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. And um, just one question at my end. Sir, some of the new entrant uh, players are actually come with a new way of pricing that uh, a recent launch by one of the players of Triple Nine is a one time payment where you get uh, the unlimited trades in uh, across all. Uh, whether it's cash or whether it's FNO or the commodity segment. So, uh, just wanted to know your the way the pricing dynamics changing in the industry uh, from a, a volume base to a flat fee model and now to a one time probably uh, how you uh, how do you see this basically what's your view around this 
Yeah, so uh, actually, you know, competition on pricing has been there for now five, six years. Uh, so we continue to see one more player. We have a bunch of, uh, I think, 100 people, players who are now offering discount broking. There will be 101 players. So it will it will continue. I think competition intensity in our industry is going to be very, very high. Um, two characteristics we have observed. Uh, there is stickiness in this business. Number two, you also uh, um, uh, find that uh, new mar market opportunities are sort of growing. Uh, you have newcomers coming, so there is enough opportunity and space to grow. Uh, and number three, it is pricing is important, but not the you know not, it's not going to give you growth if you don't have an entire ecosystem uh, created around it. Uh, and it's not easy. We've seen people struggle to create that whole ecosystem. Uh, you know, you take our own example, you give a give a pricing and you've seen that, you know, derivatives, unless you create an entire ecosystem, you know, you, your ability to garner faster than market is going to be tough. So it's about ecosystem. We've been able to do that on equity because we started the investment journey in creating that ecosystem earlier. So it's about creating that whole ecosystem. You have to give the whole, you know, gamut so that he gets the whole thing in one place. Uh, and that, is not an easy game for everyone. You need deep uh, understanding of the nuances of the market. So yes, competition will be there, and uh, you know we have to face that competition. I mean, in that sense, and and you know as a business model, therefore we are diversifying business model. Therefore we are looking to um, uh, to also deflate our broking revenue. And I talked a little bit about that earlier, so that we you know, get more competitive than we are at this point in time with respect to even equities business. Um, one needs to understand that when you keep deflating, you know, one side of the business, as you see other uh, aspects of revenue, uh, you know, and broking, which happens on the intraday side and uh, FNO side, uh, if you're able to create scale, you can create massive pro profits. And there are people who have been able to do that. But then that happens only if you have scale, not otherwise. Mm, yeah. Because the, the reason I'm asking because is a uh, especially for the high volume traders and all this uh, new uh, this kind of the pricing makes a lot of economic sense for the, the them and probably that could be the uh, pricing that can, it can create a pricing pressure for the other players so that's why I thought of uh, uh, no, I I repeat yeah. what I said you know in terms of pricing we offer zero pricing on futures and there is no 999 to join also okay. The zero pricing on futures, there is 20 rupees on intraday and 20 rupees on options. Pricing alone is not enough. Pricing is table stakes today. You need to provide the entire ecosystem to win. Yeah, got it, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Sanket Goda from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, when when we see that income breakdown, uh, the large, the biggest driver of the growth in the current year was was the interest income of uh, on on NTF book, which which almost doubled in the current year. So, so given given now the interest rates are going to move up, there is volatility in the market, and we are we are we much at a higher leverage compared to what we are in the past. So, so just just from the diversification strategy, what you have said that that incrementally to to grow this speed. Uh, and 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 probably add to the top line in meaningfully the way it added in 22 or or even in 21. Uh, 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 do you see a, a clear story of of moderation in this particular line item going ahead? And 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 and, and probably I wanted to understand how people are sensitive to the interest rates uh, when 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 they take ETF uh, uh, ETF uh, call. Uh, uh, sorry, NTF call sign. So, so, so given given the uh, given the we, we were at one of the one of it, it was one of the lowest interest rates what you, what was offered during during last uh, four quarters or six quarters kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, can can actually we have the ability to absorb a slightly higher pricing? Uh, the answer is uh, yes. It is possible to absorb a slightly higher pricing than where we are. Uh, would we be increasing pricing? Uh, we are not considering increasing pricing, but one one is also seeing you know the movements that are happened in the interest rate in the market. So it is dependent on market. So if markets are actually going to uh, you know bump up rates on the cost side, uh, then uh, yeah we will be responsive and we will uh, you know do something on the cost side. Uh, is that going to impact market? Uh, you know I would say that the 
interest rate is not a singular determinant you you supposing i would have made it even 4% just theoretically would yeah. have would this book have grown the answer is not because of 4% it would have grown if there is an opportunity that the investors find to invest when do they yeah. see this opportunity they see this opportunity when there is volatility in the market and you know they have a conviction on a certain uh, sort of a trade and that uh, is, is is sort of giving him a low entry opportunity so volatility actually gives opportunities for investors to take positions on mtf it need not be one year it can even take for a matter of few days so yes so so volatile situations is helping us grow you know the growth that we spoke when you remember sanket last time we spoke you you were quite apprehensive about the growth and you yourself just said that you know we've seen a good growth from there on why is this growth coming today if you look at our uh, mtf uh, book uh, with whatever book that you are seeing on the table uh we have only 60000 customers using using mtf and the total number of customers traders are more than a million so right. will this grow 100% you know they, that's going to be our effort not by growing uh, the the you know uh, book with one customer or two customer or 60000 customer i i need to grow the book with 2 lakh customer 1 and 1/2 lakh customer keep increasing that base and there is a lot of scope to penetrate beyond you know 60000 and that's how we will grow not by increasing the risk of an individual customer it's just 60000 customers that have got and this number uh, sometime back was uh, less than half yeah so month on month i mean from 35000 yeah it it used to be um, less than 4 months back 5 months back it was um, half nearly half, half that number uh, slightly you know uh, more than half that number got it got it got it sir and and, and finally just uh, just uh, wanted to understand that that uh, if, if i look at the prime customer base uh, as, a, as a percentage of the total nsa to clients is, is coming off a bit which means that incremental traction in the prime compared to what we are adding in the total base is, is relatively lower so, so should we see that uh, because i'm i'm presuming the prime will be the most uh, uh, r2 heavy customer so, so this lower traction in the prime uh, is, is is somewhere uh, high, is having an impact on the broking income or or market share gain, uh, which which we are missing a bit with respect to especially derivative market. Or, or or maybe maybe in that sense, even Neo Neo, uh, despite launching for more than one and a half year, the number of people who are using Neo is just seven percentage of the total NC active clients, which which is. Which honestly is a little lower compared to what we anticipated when the plan was launched, given given the pricing it had. So, so I just wanted to understand uh, this part a little better, Kiki, from from R2 point and and Neo point, how it will play out. Yeah, see, as far as time month on subscription is concerned, I will say that we had the best quarter. I mean, Q4 was the best ever quarter in hmm. terms of uh, getting prime subscription. Yes, there are customers you know who try out with a small value plan like 299 rupees and you know uh, perhaps considering the volume they may not even renew it again or they may also take a you know a plan like prepaid or the new but as we are you know creating new attractiveness in time we see that more and more high value customers are coming where we are not looking at per customer ARPU here because as uh, we discussed earlier also that it's not just about broking, it's about the total customer revenue which is like broking and uh, other incomes. Uh, yes, because of the lower uh, rates offering, the yield you know, goes down but at the same time we are looking at the total revenues rather than looking at yield. I mean, within equity you see or the capital market you see different products have different kind of uh, uh, yield so it's actually not a yield business uh, as far as uh, new and adoption is concerned see the prime and new we have created in such a way that both the plans have their own attractiveness now many derivatives customer thousands of them Despite we opening new for them, they continue to be in prime because of the package which we offer. So simple thing, like today, if you take prime, you know, you don't have to move money to ISAT. I mean, say they continue to enjoy liquidity. They have that comfort of having money in their hand. Uh, they can use their shares as margin and still they will not be charged any interest rate. So it's a very, very fine, 
you know, a kind of a package which prime customers are getting and at the same time they are loving of features like EATM or the MTF interest rate of 7.9%. So we have to see and we have seen some impact, you know, post launching of our lifetime prime plans. We have seen that many customers who otherwise would have gone for new actually have gone for lifetime prime and paying 0.1% brokerage in cash and also a very, very minimalistic brokerage in a option, say just 7 rupees per kind of a lot. Yes. So, I mean, that is how we are trying to package uh, these two plans, two separate customers, two different needs, and both are liking the propositions we offer in each and every plan. Got it, got it. So, so, so the, uh, I mean, if I look into prime income per customer in the fourth quarter, it, it has substantially increased from, from 770 odd rupees to 1050 odd rupees. So this, this is largely because people have shifted from, from uh, a, a, a 299 plan to a superior plan. That's, that's, that's the way you are seeing as a trend playing out. Yeah, so both the things have happened. We have acquired more number of uh, high value customers from market. We have activated more number of customers from our dormant base or non-traders who we acquired early, but for some reason they did not uh, uh, trade. And the second thing also, you know, uh, uh, customers who earlier were in 299 doing less volume with us did not explore all our products uh, on ICC Direct. They are also willing, you know, having experienced this in a couple of years, they are willing now to pay bigger amount, take lifetime benefit and increase volume with us. So it's a, I mean, it's both, it's adoption of uh, the new plan by existing customers as well as getting new customers uh, from market and activation of uh, the old non-traders and stop traders. Got it. Got it. Thanks. That is for my sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we take the last question from the line of Aditya Jain from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to check um, on the, uh, the, the the plans which you guidance which you gave on tech spend and marketing spend. Um, it's a uh, so what led to the development of this view? Uh, so it it fee, so is it um, you know a capacity addition for let's say you know long time to come or is it just a different approach to that you know a higher spending is required um, given the industry? Uh, just what was the thought process there and uh, what will be the success defining points that you will look for that uh, the the tech and marketing spend has been successful. Um, so what kind of goals uh, you would look for? Um, and then, then secondly, the uh, in one of the slides, the cash market share, uh, not the retail one, but total is uh, going from 8.3 to 10.2 uh, quarter over quarter. Um, so so you, you talked about retail strength, uh, but that is 30 basis points. So this is, is this reflecting very strong institutional cash market share and, and what is that driving, um, that being driven by? Yeah, so just to clarify, this third, for the first time we have given you market share of retail, right? Earlier you were getting a combined market share and uh, between retail and uh, institutional combined. So this number that, the trend that I showed you, we showed you of 9.8 going to 10.1 is a 30 basis point retail market share. There's nothing to do with this, not, doesn't include institution. So just to clarify that data, right? No, I was uh, referring to the data on slide 41. Uh, which is uh, uh, blended equity market share, 8.3 to 10.2 uh, QOQ. Uh, so given that retail estimated, as you put in the slide, is 10, 30 basis point QOQ, uh, this uh, this 190 basis point QOQ should be reflecting institutional market share. Uh, that's how I was uh, looking at it. Uh, yeah, Aditya, I think uh, uh, just kindly ignore that uh, slide 41. Uh, there seems to be a typo over there. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Coming to the, you know. So, uh, sorry, Aditya. So, you should refer to that disclosure file where uh, I'll just read out the number on the blended uh, equity market share, uh, which was the earlier one, not the retail one, as you rightly asked, is 8.9 for this particular quarter, quarter four, and 10.1 is the equivalent number for retail, which is excluding any institutional. Uh, Equity. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 
on technology and marketing spend i think your question was where are we going to incur these spends right uh, so essentially so like, no. So if I may clarify, so what led to the, you know, what made you feel that that sort of step up is required, um, and what are the goals that you would look for um, in saying that those spends have been successful? So, you know, better quality client acquisition, or you know, in in whatever way you find it uh, best to define yeah. those success yeah. factors. So, so the question is, why are we doing this? We are doing this because two reasons, three reasons I would say. Number one, it gives us. Uh, capacity enhancement right so there is capacity enhancement and ability to handle more number of clients than we are able to handle secondly today our entire you know architecture tech architecture is on prem we are moving into a hybrid model right the advantage of moving into a hybrid model is that it variableizes our costs uh, based on market conditions uh, today it is not that part of the cost the technology cost is not variable it, you know it is it can variableize and the fact that it is now moving to a cloud environment it gives us lot more agility in new uh, developments uh, partnerships all of those so it gives us greater agility it gives so launch to market product to market today which takes sometimes months for us to you know hit the market uh, you could have probably seen, you know, how much time it has taken for us to come out with various propositions on the derivative side, as an example. You know, these would have been much faster uh, had we been on a on a cloud kind of an environment than what what it is today. So, um, so that's the uh, sort of advantage. The whole platform and tech architecture therefore becomes, you know, we are taking this opportunity to leap uh, into a cutting edge modern kind of an architecture which has. Variable variable cost st uh, structure, uh, greater capacity, uh, and greater agility, and reliability and availability is another angle that you know uh, is is being uh, you know is guiding us. That the reliability of and the availability of a modern uh, data center, um, you know, it would add to this. So all these four uh, would be the you know I I would say advantage. How does it benefit? I think it will benefit us in uh, clearly providing a much superior customer experience and we have seen that when we get much superior customer experience it eventually translates into a improvement in net promoter score b improvement in cross sales and therefore you know revenues that arise out of non equity side and c greater loyalty and i would add d a greater attraction for more number of clients it it adds to it all these are additive you know it's very difficult to attribute it on a one to one basis but these are elements which help all these four outcomes uh, to happen so what would be what would be expect out of this i think we would eventually expect all these four outcomes improved cross sell improved uh, nps improved uh, uh, reduced downtime uh, on the site um, improved uh, i would say um, uh, you know uh, 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 revenue uh, uh, and improve, improved customer acquisition rate. So all of this is what we would expect as an outcome. Marketing, as we said, there are two types of marketing that we do. One is what is what is direct uh, for client acquisition, and the second is the marketing, which is digital marketing, and the uh, second is the marketing spend that we do above the line, which is for brand building, awareness, product promotion, and so on and so forth. We have very recently started doing the second. Uh, for several years, we have uh, not invested in that space at all. Uh, why are we doing this? We are doing this because, you know, we are seeing a lot of action happening in the space in the market. Uh, and uh, uh, we have not uh, sort of uh, done anything in this space for a long time. Uh, why did we not do this? We did not do this because we were busy modernizing a lot of features, busy modernizing a lot of stuff at our platform and we felt that it would it would it should be done at a point in time when we are ready to receive customers with a promise that you know gets communicated and that promise has to be delivered on the platform we have reached that kind of a stage where we feel you know confident to stand up and uh, talk to the customer about features talk to about some of the things that uh, you know we are talking to him uh, and he gets a great experience out of it that's why you would have seen 
propositions getting uh, sort of communicated on television about the line I'm talking about. Uh, on products like EATM, you would have seen a lot of ads on CNBC in case you watched it. Then Pay Later, uh, which is basically MTF, uh, our brand of MTF that we've launched. Uh, and we, we are adding more such, you know, colors. One Click Baskets is another very powerful brand, which, you know, probably people know it like small case. We have our own small case equivalent. So we have created compelling propositions now to talk about. So we feel this is the right time to communicate uh, in, in a, uh, in a about the line fashion as well. So that's why we are doing this. Correct, perfectly. Uh, really, it's your nation. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Chendo for closing comments. So thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, very, very intense and enjoyable uh, conversation and very insightful questions from your side. Really appreciate uh, you know all the time that you've spent on this. I'm, I'm sure there could be afterthoughts and questions to follow. Uh, we'll always available. Uh, just ping in. Uh, you know all of us. Reach out, me, Harvinder, any of our IR guys, and we'd be happy to set up time and do a more detailed dive in as and when you require. Thank you very, very much once again, and thanks for all the support that you guys have been giving us. Really appreciate it. Uh, good night. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICSCS Securities, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>